In today's video, we are going to go through how to create low poly graphics in Affinity Designer. So when you're first starting out with low poly design, I find it extremely beneficial to start with an image. And in this particular image, I want to just use the baby penguin. So I'm gonna hit Command C, or you could do Edit Copy go into the artboard that you've created, hit Command V, or Edit Paste. And I'm just going to move this so that I can get a better view of the penguin. And I'm actually going to enlarge it as well. So this image is one that I found on a free stock photo site. I will leave the link below. And over in the layers panel, I am going to, I think I might change the opacity slightly. And then I'm going to lock that layer so that I cannot click it and move it as I'm designing. And next I am going to grab the pen tool or P on your keyboard. Up at the very top, I am going to turn off the fill. I'm going to change the stroke to like a bright blue. Just want it to be something that stands out against the mostly black and white image. And then in the mode, I want to use the polygon mode instead of using something where it, it allows curves. And also make sure to not click the line mode because I accidentally click the line mode quite often when I'm trying to get the polygon mode. And then I want over at snap, I want that first one aligned to nodes of selected curves selected. So a couple keyboard shortcuts that I'm going to use as you're following along with me. Command or control, depending on what kind of computer you're on. Command and the plus sign to zoom in, and then command and the minus sign to zoom out. Or you can also do command zero to get back to just the artboard. So I am indeed going to zoom in, and then I'm just using the scroll on my mouse to move it up just so I can get a good view of the face. And when I'm doing low poly design, I want to kind of section things off. So I'm going to do the black first and then the white and then going in for the eyes and the beak. And you can also, another keyboard shortcut or trick is to use the space bar and it will bring up that hand tool and then you can move your design around. So with the pen tool, just make one point or node, a second one, and just go in and start making triangles or any sort of like geometric shape. I try not to go too extreme with how many sides are on these. I try to stick under four or five. And then I try to keep them all relatively around the same size. I mean, I'll vary a little bit, some larger, some smaller, but I don't want extremes when I'm doing this. So then moving on to the next one, I just click a point and then continue all the way around. And you don't have to be super precise with making sure you are on the same exact lines as the image, but try to get as close as you can to the same shape and feel of the image that you're using as a reference. One more note, when you are using the pen tool, you will notice on your, the very last point you make, it's going to show up as a kind of like a circle. That's how you know you are closing the shape. If you ever want to undo your last move, just hit Command and Z. All 
Okay, now I have the darker section of the penguin's head completed. I'm going to move on. I'm going to do the eyes and the beak first, and then I'm going to go on and do the white. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the lightest section of the head. You will notice that there are some lines that have gone a little wonky. Don't worry about that just yet. Once we start filling in the different shapes, then we can go in with the node tool and adjust it so everything is lining up the way that it needs to. Okay, so now the head of the penguin is done. I am just going to move down. I'm going to do, um, I was thinking I was gonna do the feet, but you can't really see them too well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do kind of like the shadow area for the wings and then do the entire body of the penguin. So I don't know about you, but when I design, especially when it's something like this where it takes some time to complete, I kind of jump around with what I'm doing. So I don't always stick to one detail until it's completely finished and then move on to the next. I kind of like move around to different things. So I'm going to take a break from actually making the shapes and I'm going to color in the head of the penguin. So I'm going to zoom in and work on the eyes and beak first and then I'm going to move out to the lightest section and then the darkest section. So this is also time consuming because we have to go back and forth between the colors and also moving the lines just so they match up the way that they should correctly. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't when using the pen tool. And honestly, you could save adjusting all the lines until the very end, but doing the color is kind of a fun part. So starting off with this eye section, what you are going to need is this color panel on the right. So I'm going to select the stroke and I'm going to hit V on my keyboard or you can use your move tool which is on the top left and just select one of the shapes. I'm going to take the eyedropper tool and just come in to the eye and select the color, oops, went to the wrong shape, and select one of the colors that are that's in that image. And because the image was smaller, it kind of works out to our benefit because it is pretty pixelated when I'm this zoomed in, so it's a little bit easier to grab different shades of colors. So you see that gray color is in the eyedropper, so I'm just going to click on that stroke, or excuse me, I'm going to click on the color with the stroke selected, and then the two arrows that kind of show the fill color and the stroke color, I'm just going to click on that arrow and it will switch it to the fill and no stroke, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to move on to the next one, get the eyedropper tool. This time I want something different. Make sure you are selecting different colors because you don't want all of the same. So now I have that eye done and on to the beak. Also as a side note, 
when you are working on a project, it is best to save it as you are going along so that if something happens, like your computer just decides to crash, you have not lost all of the work that you have already put into this project. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and save this project. And then as I'm working, I will hit Command S on my keyboard to save it as I'm going. You could always go up to File and Save. So at any point, if you want to take a look at the progress that you have made, just scroll down to the bottom of your layers panel and uncheck that box on the right and it will remove that background image. As you can see, I am noticing some lines where it's hard to see with the image there. I can go back in later and adjust all of those. So with it back on and with it off so you can get a good idea. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish up that bottom half of the penguin. So now I have all of my shapes in. I'm just going to finish the color on the bottom and it will almost be done. Okay, so I have all of the shapes completely filled in. So I'm going to unselect that background so I can look at the penguin. It looks like there's a lot of lines. Some of that I think is just the way that it's showing up on the screen, but I know there are some gaps like right in here. So the way to fix that is to zoom in. And actually there's a couple here, so I'll fix those. Uh, with the node tool, which is the third one down on the left or A on your keyboard, you can go in and just move some things around to get it to fit correctly. Some of the small gaps I really don't mind so much, so I will group everything at the very end. And you have created a low poly penguin for you to use on your website or to sell on with those on-demand printing sites. It may even work really well as a holiday card. So I hope you enjoyed this class. It was something that was requested. So if there's anything that you would like to see on my channel, please let me know in the comments or on Instagram or Twitter, and I will be sure to create a video based on your request. So as always, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, comment, and share.